welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? I'm your host, Karen E. Osborne, and this is a space where writers and creatives can come together and talk about our favorite subject, books. <laughs> And I am so excited to introduce you. You know, one of the things I meant to ask you, uh, Deborah, before we started recording was how do you pronounce your last name? Sure, it's Deborah Isles. Isles, right? Deborah with Isles. Mm -hmm. So it's Deborah Isles. And she is so glad to be here. And I'm so glad that you're here. So thanks. Thank you for that. So let me tell you a little bit about isn't that a cool background? Do you see her beautiful cover? Campo. So I'll tell you a little bit about uh, this book. By day, Kevin Connolly is a detective at Campo, a small campus police force at a prestigious university. By night, he's an art student with a lonely heart. The story begins with an art theft, but the clues point toward embezzlement and sexual shenanigans. Oh, that's a cool word. <laughs> when the case gets linked to a murder off campus, things really get complicated. That sounds so, so intriguing. I can't wait for us to talk some more about it, Deborah. So I spent 18 years on university campuses, working on university campuses, and then another 26 years as a consultant being on campuses all over. So I love it when my two worlds come together. It's always so, so fun and so intriguing. This um, premise just really just sucked me in. Can you tell us just a little bit more about the book without giving yeah. away everything? Well, of course. And thank you so much for having me. This is really fun. So I also have spent about 18 years uh, working on college campuses. So um, that was a big part of my inspiration. But um, let's see, Kevin, my main character, he's kind of an ordinary Joe of a guy. He is a police detective, but he's not, you know, this is not a high powered, you know, mm. homicide unit or something. He's just kind of a normal guy working at the university. And the novel brings together aspects of his personal life, his family life, his dating life, and also the full range of stuff that he has to do at work, which really ranges from, you know, very dull routine, you know, running uh, to, uh, around campus and just checking to make sure that everything is cool, all the way to very super dramatic events. Like in this case, there is there is a murder that happens, and that is, you know, way outside of normal. So. <laughs> So it was fun oh, writing the book. So what do you really like about him? What's what's what what are, what qualities that he has that you really, really just love? He's he's very dedicated to his work. He he loves campus life. He's also an art student at night. And he mm -hmm. so he takes advantage of the, you know, what's happening on campus. He's uh, you know, he's a serious guy. He's very insightful about the power dynamics and the social hierarchies on campus, which is something that interests me, no surprise. Um, he just, he approaches things with an open mind and an open heart. And I like his artistic nature, mm. but um, you know, he's not perfect. And uh, the thing that is most annoying, I think about Kevin as a character is that he is a bit of a doofus when it comes to his dating life. He really doesn't have that together. And he kind of gets in his own way. Um, he lets his investigative impulses sometimes go to work in his dating life. And that doesn't go well. So it doesn't work. No, no, it's 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 a bad impulse. And so there's room for Kevin to learn. Uh, so that's one of the things I don't really like about him. But I will say as the writer, it was fun writing that. I did enjoy yes. like, making him, you know, goof up. <laughs> you know, some of the some of the qualities that work for us at work don't work for us yeah. in relationship building. I had a, a dear friend who uh, worked in the development office, the fundraising office at a major university, and her job was to ask questions all the time to, you know, learn who her donors are. And so now she's trying to date and uh she starts asking the gentleman all these questions, having coffee. You know, they met online, having coffee. And finally he looked at her and he said, 
You must have a questionnaire on your lap or something. Why don't you just give it to me and I'll fill it out and then maybe we could just talk. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. So it sounds like she had something in common with your with your with your police uh, captain on, on the police force at the university. So when you were thinking about writing, like what inspired you to pick this topic, this approach? You know, what was your inspiration there? Well, we already talked about our shared experience working on campus. And I've always found it so fascinating how a college campus, and I work at a big university, is it's, you know, people think of it as just classrooms and professors and students, but there's so much more to it. It's really a small city. And all the things that happen in, you know, with humans in, in our bigger lives are happening on campus, you know, all the misbehaviors, all, you know, everything. So I find that very interesting. And, um, you know, I first started writing a little bit like Kevin, I guess. I started taking um, writing classes in night school. Just mm -hmm. it was kind of a, you know, a tuition benefit of my job. And I really it was something I'd kind of always wanted to do. So I started doing that. And uh, it just it just kind of blossomed from there. I just enjoyed the writing. And even beyond the university, I've always found workplace dynamics just very interesting. I'm just mm -hmm. interested in like logistics and procedures and like, how do you get stuff done? And what are, you know, what's really happening behind the scenes? How is the sausage getting made? So those were the things that really inspired me to take up this subject. Yeah, cool. That sounds great. So are you, um, now that you've got your first book yeah. out in the world, which is a huge congratulations. Uh, I know how, what a big, big thing that is to get that first baby out. I actually cried when my agent said to me, I have a contract. Aww. And I did. I cried all the way to the parking lot. I didn't cry in front of her. You know, I just said, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, this is wonderful. Let me take it home. And then I hit this, the door sill, you know, heading out the door. And oh. So excited. So now you've got your baby out in the world. Are you working on another one? I am. So I kind of always imagined Campo as a, a series. I always mm -hmm. imagined that Kevin would, um, you know, have new cases to solve and life at the university would continue to be very interesting. And he would kind of always have a new girlfriend and hopefully do a little bit better each time. That was always part of my vision. So I have started working on um, a sequel and I'm about, I don't know, about maybe 15 or 20% of the way in. I have to say it's going so much faster this time because I do feel like I just understand what I'm doing a little bit better. So it's and you been... understand your character better, yeah. right? You know how he'll, he'll respond and stuff. That's wonderful. Series are such a good idea. You know, that yeah. people... And once someone falls in love with the first book, then they can't wait for the next one. Well, I'm hoping, you know, the other thing that's been super fun about it is like other characters, not just Kevin and his, you know, the chief, the police chief, obviously the two of them are going to reappear, but other characters are like showing up. And that's interesting to me They because I don't really write with a, a strict outline or I just kind of throw Kevin into different situations and see how they evolve and. So it's been fun to see which characters from the previous book want to show up and how they want to behave differently. So it's been it's been great. I know it's it's so wonderful that you know these characters live and breathe for us and they can take us places that we didn't intend. And you know, uh it's it's like we're like schizophrenic or something, you know, we have all these people talking to us in our in our heads. So that is fun. So as you think about your your reading life, mm -hmm. right? Because all of us are, you know, we are readers before we're writers. Um, was there any author or book that had a real profound uh, effect, impact on either your writing life or just, just your personal life? That is such a hard question because I, I do love to read and I've always been a big reader, uh, you know, ever since I learned to read. You know, I was one of those kids who would kind of follow my mom around with a book. 
so that I could read it to her. You know, even when I just was first leaning, learning to read, I just loved it so much. And But if you're asking me kind of who are my favorite authors, the person who I just admire so much is uh, David Foster Wallace is one of my very, mm -hmm. very, very favorites. And I don't, I don't aspire to write like him. I, mm -hmm. I think he's very brilliant. Uh, well, was very brilliant. Unfortunately, he's deceased, but um, I would really recommend his essays. He also wrote this fantastic novel that's called Infinite Jest, but it's an enormous book. So you kind of have to, you have to really be into it. I would say. But his essays are are beautiful and funny and insightful, and the way he writes is really terrific. Uh, closer to Campo, I mean, I always loved you know Nancy Drew novels, and I used to love the Spencer novels when I was you know younger, much younger, and so that's more of what I was kind of aspiring to create for myself. Yeah, yeah. And is there anything that you've read recently that you could recommend to our audience? Well, I. You know, I have to recommend True Grace, which I just finished, your book. I didn't ask her to do that. No, you did not. But it's so good. I really, oh, what a what a slice of life that is. I really, really enjoyed that. And just thinking about how a person at a whole different time in history and with so many um, odds stacked against her was just, you know, powering through and solving every problem that came her way. It was really, really fun read. And I especially loved yeah. Karen. The way that, you know, you kind of got us right into the bad situation, like on the third page. That's uh, that's something I'm working on is like, like, get get to the get to the meat faster. So anyway, other books that I've read recently, I'm uh, also speaking of really big books. My son pressured me to read The Power Broker uh, by Robert Caro. Yes. Which is, uh, Robert it's Moses. It's an old one. Yeah, the book it was is an really, amazing book, though. Really amazing. It's um, I picked it up because there's a the ninety nine percent invisible podcast. People are doing kind of a companion podcast, so I'm trying to I'm trying to keep up with them. It's basically it, but that is a big book too. So it is. Yeah, I re I remember uh, reading it, you know, as a young younger much younger person, and then finding later in life uh, more about him. And in the, some of the not nice things that he that he did, you know, it, so oh, yeah. it was he was a complex character. He was a complex man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So now that everyone is totally happy that they met you, everyone is dying to read Campo. They are also eager to follow you so that they can find out when the sequel comes out. So how can our audience stay and be in touch, stay in touch? Well, I'm going to put some links in the chat. I wish I were faster at this, but hmm. I don't well, think I that's the best that. way. That's not the best way for us to do it. Um, no, they don't come through as. Yeah. Late. So it's better if you just, it's better just if you just tell, tell you. us. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my name is spelled strangely. So check the spelling. Everybody always wants to put an extra S in my last name, like islands, like Isles that way. Uh, so don't do that. But I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram, and my book is available on Amazon. So I, I did put that link. That that one, for some reason, came through as an actual link. Um, cool. Karen and I'll a put a link. I'll put a link uh, under the uh, intro for when, we, when we post the video. Oh, I'll you. make sure there's, there's a link there as well. Yeah. I don't so, have a, a, a website yet, but I'm working on it, so... Excellent. That's good. We like hearing that. <laughs> so you have to look out for that. So please, when you contact uh, Deborah, when you let her know that you met her here on what are you reading? What are you writing? Because I know she'd like to know that you watched her video and that intrigued you to go and find her books and read her books and follow her wherever she is. And she'll let you know when her website is up. Thanks everybody for, first of all, thank you, Deborah, for a lovely conversation. And thank all of you for watching us 
I will see you next time on What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.